Nothing goes together better than Twisted Metal and the year 2012, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> if I had a gun to my head. <laughs> well, you do. That's why they wanted Apocalypse. <laughs> this is Rogue Trip Vacation 2012. <laughs> a game made by the creators of Twisted Metal series and set in the year 2012. Is the year 2012. See? 2012. <laughs> the world is Wait, GT Interactive, why, why do I recognize that, by the way? I couldn't tell you. Uh, they were a big publishing uh, company back in the early 2000s, did a lot of shovelware, licensed stuff. <gasps> sort of like a second string THQ. Ah. Don't let that spoil your day. Take a vacation. Oh, early. Oh dear. She that CGI. <laughs> early jungle physics, though. My God, those those legs. <laughs> I was more think, thinking, man. I hope they were happy that they they didn't have proper jiggle fi uh, physics because that would put someone's eyes out at the early animation. <laughs> I, I was just terrified by the legs that looked like they were about two torso lengths between thigh and knee. I mean, look at that. That, that would kill someone with yield faces. <laughs> Not too worried about these zany, wacky, oppressed lower classes. Can't afford one of Big Daddy's snob vests? Don't despair. Fight back. Hire an auto mercenary. These professional party crashers will hijack you on a high speed. Yeah, this is uh, taking place in post apocalyptic America. After it's been wrecked by class warfare and capitalism. What year is this set in again? We're only eight years off. <laughs> <laughs> they got the year wrong. Anything else, dead on. <laughs> I feel they got the date a little off. They were real pessimists over at uh, Single Track. Mm. I mean, Steve Bannon looks a lot more healthier there. <laughs> okay, yeah. now that was Steve Bannon. <laughs> Color of. That was an armed vehicle. That's a fuel truck. It seems like you should carry some other cargo. <laughs> Counterproductive. Maybe it's the one from the end of Mad Max 2 and it's just built with sand. Spoilers, by the way. Haven't seen Mad Max 2 because Mad Max 1 is shit. Oh, the sequels are so much better. Possibly, but that first movie was so bad I couldn't watch anything. F M M Fury Road is one of the best movies ever, though. But yep, we are in quite the Mad Max setting here in this game too, because uh, society is over. So the main character is anti-Semitic. Uh, fortunately, no. Fortunately, there is no main character. Although this game does have the very crass, vulgar, and ironically racist sense of humor, which wouldn't surprise me if got some anti-Semitism in there. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually rather sophisticated satire in the opening cutscene, but that's the end of that. The rest of this game is real gross, real vulgar. <laughs> okay, the alien is the third character. Usually it's an unlockable or secret or something, but... <laughs> what do you think this is, Vigilante 8? <laughs> and of course, a superhero. Well, what's a post-apocalypse without some kind of genetically modified freak? Captain Proton, isn't that like taken from somewhere? Um, yeah, from um, Ratchet and Clank, one of the characters, but it's a different uh, character. Uh, probably not the one I'm thinking of them. Also, this predates Ratchet and Clank by quite a while. Yep. <laughs> Wienermobile. This game was released two years to the day after um, Twisted Metal 2, by the way. And in that interim, they also released the same development studio, released Critical Depth, which is another car combat game. Oh, except with submarines, if I remember right. Yep, that one is very, very different from anything Twisted Metal-ish, and it has very few of the actual Twisted Metal devs working on it. Also not very good from what I've heard. I, 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 I'm curious, who were the tourists, since they did not show up here? Those were the tourists. The uh, Captain Proton, the alien, those are the tourists will be uh, taking on to see the sights. Uh, they, oh, okay, okay, we escort them, or...? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like a, if I remember right, because I haven't played this since it came out back in like 2000, 
It's kind of a cross between Twisted Metal and Crazy Taxi, and that you're fighting for the, the tourists. Okay, all right. Now that, that explains it. Also, Meat Wagon. That's a good name for that vehicle. It's, uh, it's completely unsubtle, but it. I like it. It's great. It's so good that they reused it in Twisted Metal 2012. <laughs> yeah, but it, it it's not a huge phallic thing on the roof in 2012. Unfortunately, no. Yeah, the Wiener Mobile is by far the best vehicle in this game, and obviously it's the one we got to start with. Use your cash for weapons upgrades. Because like all the other Twisted Metal Let's Plays, I'm going to play most of the vehicles in this LP. New one every video. Yeah, I must say, I, I like the at least visual differences in them. They're, they're, it's just not, you know, boxy car to boxy car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had a whole new roster they had to come up with, and they did a pretty good job. Yeah. They don't have quite the same personality as the old cars, but... Uh, I'm surprised there's no uh, serial killer clown. Yeah, this this one's a bit more Mad Magazine than uh, Fangoria. That's for damn sure. Go, oh, and the, the main selling point for this game. <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack. It's not quite the main selling point. They didn't put it on the uh, cover <laughs> like Twisted Metal 3 did. <laughs> they did for the, the European version. Ah. So that's the main reason why I know, but yeah, the the mu most of the music in this game is provided by the mighty mighty boss tones of um, the impression that I get fame. That's not entirely accurate, but yes, this is the mighty mighty boss tones. the The fact is, most of the music is original. Ah, right. They just have a licensed track here at the beginning here. It just seemed like when I was playing it, like it was always like the same three or four songs. <laughs> There's a chance that this song is just repeating in your head for the rest of your life because uh, it's incredibly repetitive and it will play over and over and over again for this entire first level to the point of I badness. would not rule out some kind of lasting damage from having played this, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I got a couple of palette cleansers uh, ready. Uh, <laughs> I have a spe specific, specific playlist of Spotify that's a palette cleanser playlist. Yeah. Well, this song haunts my nightmares because, like, it's so repetitive, just in one listen you would get sick of it, and you have to listen to it over and over again to beat the level. Also completely at odds with the, the rest of the tone of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun, but yeah, it's also not the same sort of fun that this game is trying to have. Yeah. Like, say what you will about uh, Twisted Metal 2012, but at least most of the music is somewhat better. Oh yeah. Wait, what? Are you saying there's no Rob Zombie on this? There is not. None whatsoever. <laughs> this is a Rob Zombie free film. There are only two licensed songs in this entire game. One of them is this, and the other one is by a band called Nashville Pussy. Oh, yeah, I know them. Yeah. Had an album called Let Them Eat Pussy. <laughs> it's just called Let Them Eat dot dot dot, and you're supposed to fill the yeah. blanks you actually have. <laughs> Yeah, that um, that album and that album cover was quite infamous uh, amongst my friends when I was a kid. <laughs> By the way, did I miss what uh, where the map is? Uh, well, the radar is in the top left. No, I mean, like, is it in New York or generic capital city? Oh, yeah, the level is called XLAX. Ah, okay. We are in Los Angeles, the airport good place to begin any vacation. And of course we'll get stuck here for about 8 hours. Yep. <laughs> Probably not as bad as the Madrid airport. You can tell this was released in 2000 right there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be able to get away with that in about 18 months. Again, this game was released in 1998, but yes before certain events. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, it is prophetic, not uh, actively satirizing anything that uh, had happened previously. And that weird drive down two wheels and flipping around through the air, that is an energy move for some reason. It has no purpose. Okay, I thought it was like, you know, pre-pre-pre-proto-physics. Yeah, no, I accidentally pressed the button combo that makes your car just fucking do that for no reason. Yeah, the game's surprisingly bare bones when you really get down to them. 
Uh, I would say it's more robust than most uh, Twisted Metal games. Mm. Oh, the tourist gimmick. I just remember being really disappointed with it at the time. Because um, we, we did get Twisted Metal 2 over here, but it was kind of a limited release. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember seeing this and thinking, oh cool, it's from the guys that did Twisted Metal. It's just like Twisted Metal. And it's, it's really not. <laughs> I think it's close enough that it is as canon as about half the Twisted Metal games. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about, as, it's about as canon as half the Twisted Metal games now. Yeah, that's for sure. Plus, Wienermobile with a giant erection attack. Mm -hmm. Give him a swipe with your big old hot dog there. <laughs> um, yeah, how, how much influence did da David Yaffe have on this game? Precisely zero. We never have to speak of Okay, Yaffe so... Yaffe. Yeah, okay, I was thinking of a Studio Minus Yaffe or... Yeah, he's not even in the credits. Don't have to worry about ah, it at all. Alright. That, that's why it's uh, so much more, you know, non-edgy. Yeah, and more just gross. He's basically got his sense of humor, but yeah. not his uh, love of gore. And before we get too far away from it, uh, I have to shout, Taste my big boner. <sighs> <laughs> because you haven't heard that enough in your life. Thank you so much. Right <laughs> um. So mechanically... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Oh, weapon upgrades. Um, that's a mechanic in this game, where you can spend a thousand of your hard-earned dollars to um, make one use of your weapons uh, more powerful. Questionable limit, a uh, questionable use, since most of the weapons are... I remember thinking that they were slightly better than they would have been in the other Twisted Metal games. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like weapon upgrades because uh, they only last for one use, like I said. Yeah. So you fire it once and you have wasted your weapon upgrade. That eject thingy, do you eject your passenger or what do you eject? That weapon, which is called the premature ejector, it's <laughs> um, <laughs> if you hit the person who is carrying the Taurus with them, because there's only one Taurus in the entire level, the premature ejector will cause them to uh, lose the Taurus. The Taurus will pop right out of the car and then you can oh. grab it. And you need the Taurus in order to get money and get photo ops. And the whole purpose of this game is getting money, so there you go. We are obviously in post-capitalism. It's a bit crazy taxi with um, having to pick up passengers and drive them to places. Yeah. Also, I really wanted to draw attention to that porn star billboard. I completely missed it. Luckily, it'll be showing up a lot throughout the game because they reuse a lot of assets. <laughs> Reusing assets in a PS1 game? My part. <laughs> at least, I must say, they are not at least using fog everywhere. Yeah. Huge, long draw distances. You can see pretty much the whole level from any point within it. Graphically, this is on the higher end of PS1 car combat. <laughs> Wow, that is uh, damning with faint praise. <laughs> uh, but uh, is it really? I mean, there's a couple of them. Both Interstate games were PS1. Twisted Metal 1 and 2 were PS1. Uh, Vigilant 8? Yeah, both of them. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few. That's It was like the golden era. Certainly was. This is about the only era, because it never really survived the PS2. That's for sure. Hardly anyone's tried it since. Yeah, the only, the only one that really shows up these days is Carmageddon because they just refuse to let that franchise die. It's such a good name. <laughs> it is, and it's just so sad that it keeps getting saddled onto terrible games. Oh, and technically we should actually count Mario Kart as a car combat game. If we're blasphemous. Eh, it's a kart racer, I would say. Like, kart racers are considered to be different from car combat. Because it's more about the, the racing than, you know, beating everybody up. Yeah. So, Diddy Kong Racing is the same as Twisted Metal 2, okay? Sold. Well, if that's the hill you're willing to die on, <laughs> then you might stop okay. you. Hey, we won. We barely have to hear this song anymore. <sighs> 
Well, we barely have to hear it in this, because I'm fairly certain it's awoken some horrible, suppressed part of my memory from back when I was, like, 17. Every song you ever hear for the rest of your life will sound exactly like this. It's tragic. But we have to see uh, Meatwagon's yeah, ending. Yep, gonna choose death. <laughs> Is this your subs or the game's? I added all the subtitles. Thank you, subtitles. Yep. <laughs> Answered your questions How in advance. How oddly informative they are. It's like, hey, how do you prevent Rutkowski from asking questions? Subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, subtitle fairy. <laughs> yep. uh, the Funtopia level is one we will see later in the campaign, but as a bonus level, and that code allows you to play it in challenge mode just for fun. Uh, I don't really care about it, but yeah, every ending of this game is exactly the same. Except for one line of dialogue. <laughs> Every character has their own specific line of dialogue that the uh, our little host will say to them after you beat the game. The endings in this game are atrocious. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> it's syndicate level. Yeah. I mean, because we don't have a goal in this game. It's post-capitalism. None of our characters really care about anything but scraping by and making a little bit of money. Which is why we're doing the whole vacation thing. So, uh, yeah, we try to make our money, and then at the end of the game, the game just fucking ends, and then we get a trophy. <laughs> they could have had tourist endings, at least. Yeah. You know. That's a thought. But, uh, no, the tourists aren't really characters, unfortunately. In fact, they're randomly generated in each level. Ah, okay. I thought you... I thought, didn't you show them having uh, background stuff? Yeah, they have their own little stories, but they don't, uh, culminate in anything. <laughs> So, yeah, um, it's whichever whichever tourist you get per level is completely random. No. Oh, okay. Yep. But uh, that's that's the first level. Uh, we'll be going on different vacations across uh, apocalyptic America. It's going to be great seeing all the different gross characters in this game as they struggle to survive pointlessly. <laughs> do they ever do a one-to-one -one remake of like Central Detroit or something? Just to be ah, look, look, no, nothing changed. <laughs> Ah, satire. Ah. Terrible endings are going to be a running theme as we also begin a Let's Play of Twisted Metal 3. Because Twisted Metal 3 was released on the exact same day as Rogue Trip. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rogue Trip was developed entirely as a fuck you to Twisted Metal 3 because Single Track lost the rights to make Twisted Metal and they were pissed off about it. See, I can appreciate that level of pettiness. It was built out of spite, and uh, <laughs> I will allow the viewers to compare and contrast, see which uh, which game they like more. <laughs> and I'm completely blind to both of them, so this is going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on the same day that this LP, this video goes up, I will also post the first video of Twisted Metal 3, so that you at home can compare and contrast. And uh, as we go through both games, we will be making a lot of comparisons, that's for sure. So one game brought into the world out of sheer greed, the other brought into the world out of sheer spite. This is like Alien vs. Predator <laughs> in game form. That actually might be why Road Trip is so uh, anti-capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've accidentally uncovered something here. <laughs> we will have a lot more time to discuss that as we continue to go through Road Trip.